Jesus, help me call on Jesus. 
Jesus. Help me call on Jesus. Help me call on Jesus. He's the son of man. Help me call on Jesus. I'm glad he was born. Help me call on Jesus. You ought to wave your hand if you're happy about it. You ought to wave your hand if you're happy about it. Glory to his name. 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 Glory, glory. Oh, hurry to the new. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good Christmas morning to all who are sharing with us on this Lord's Day, this day that God has brought us together to celebrate the birth of our King. We thank God for Christmas Day. And I say to all of my members and all who are joining with us on this Christmas Day, may you have a blessed Christmas Day and may you abide in knowing that this is the reason for the season and we celebrate it with great hallelujah and praise the Lord. Let me welcome on this Christmas day a friend, a brother, a sister, and their family. I welcome to this pulpit and to this celebration Pastor Carsey Barnes and Sister Barnes and the children, the entire Barnes family. And they are going to share with us today and bless us and draw us closer to the Christ child that prepared himself to be the savior of the world. And I, I trust that you will spend these moments we have together rejoicing and praising our savior. I'm gonna ask you now, there with your family, to join me in prayer. I want to ask you to join me in lifting up a prayer of thanksgiving. And I know thanksgiving was just last month, but this is what we believe every day is a day of thanksgiving. And especially this day in the celebration of the gift of God to the world. John 3.16 is still relevant now. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Our Father and our gracious God, we are excited. We are celebrating the gift that you gave the world. Every person that you blessed to enter into this world, we thank you for. We thank you for the gift of your son and the personal gift 
to each one who has received you as Lord and as Savior. We welcome you into the life of a man, a woman, a boy, a girl who needs to know you as their personal savior. We say thank you and with the joy of Christmas, we celebrate and the joy of your sacrifice, we celebrate and the joy that we give unto you right now. Bless us as we gather together. Allow your spirit to fall fresh on us. And Lord, uh, may the spirit of the living God touch and bless in a mighty, mighty way. We love you. We bless you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We honor you. We say thank you from the depths of our soul. And Lord, again, we ask you in the midst of this pandemic, you will move by your healing power. There are those who are yet dying. We're praying for that family. There are those who are yet being infected. We pray for their covering in their lives. And oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the vaccine that's delivering many from this pandemic and releasing them with your healing power. Lord, we say do it again, do it again, do it again in the name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise in Jesus' name. And the people of God said amen. And the people of God said amen. And the people of God said amen. Bless you, bless you, bless you. I'm excited about this Christmas day and want you to allow the spirit of the living God to be poured out upon you. I want to thank again this family, the Barnes family. And I want to thank pastor and wife and children for being a part of this wonderful Christmas day. I've asked Sister Barnes, and she's going to come now, and she's going to speak to us about the relevance of this day. And I want you to receive her as she comes and then their wonderful daughter Megan is going to sing and celebrate along with one of their wonderful sons, Carson, that's going to join her in celebrating and singing. Come on, New Covenant, clap your hands for the wonderful First Lady of the Antioch Church South and our Dean in our state convention. Come on, sister. Come on and bless the Lord for us. Good morning, good morning. 
we bring to you Christmas cheers this morning because we know that God is good and he's given us his only begotten son. We've been through so much, saints of God. COVID-19 has consumed our attention. It's the talk of the town. But I came this day, this Christmas morning, to share with you all three encouraging facts that we should take heart in on today. First, I want to encourage all of us to take our focus off of this pandemic and just for a little while, place it on Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the season. Isaiah 9 and 6 says it best. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Truly, there are so many wonderful things about Jesus. For the real truth of the matter is this, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we never would have made it through these trying times. Secondly, I encourage us all to talk about him. As we quarantine together and spend time around the dinner tables, share stories about Jesus. Talk about his miraculous birth. Share with your loved ones that this baby was so good that his father wanted to share him with the world, so he gave to us his only begotten son. Reflect on the fact that he was born to a virgin woman who knew not a man. Bring light to the fact that this baby was oh so special that his name is above every name. His name is so wonderful that a first, a middle, and a last name was not enough for him. Talk about how when his mother got ready to give birth to him, she went to a place to do so and found that there was no room in the inn. Talk about how extra special this baby was. Many rushed to adore him and they brought gifts and found themselves bowing down to worship this wonderful baby. Let's thank God lastly. Lastly, let's thank God. Thank God that he was born. Let's be thankful for the gift that God gave us. For if you never unwrap a present, just realize that we got the best gift that God could have ever given us. He gave us his only begotten son, who's the gift that keeps on giving. Remember, saints of God, talk about Jesus. Take your focus off of the pandemic and then lift your hands in your hearts to thank God for the gift that keeps on giving. God bless you. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world of sin and error The soul felt its worth. Oh, 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 a thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious. This morn fall on your knees 
that Jesus was born on today. Merry Christmas to all of you from the Barnes family. We're so honored that Pastor Thurston asked us to come and share with you all on this special, special holiday. Amen.
we continue to celebrate the birth of Jesus, I stand to present to you our speaker of the hour, our preacher for the hour. He's my husband. He's the proud pastor of the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church South. I love him because he leads by example, and he lives by the word of God. I introduce to you and present to others my husband, my king, my covering, the proud pastor again of the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, the Reverend Dr. C.E. Barnes III. Hear ye him. Certainly today to God we give the glory. Let me thank my wife for that wonderful introduction on today and uh, certainly to Dr. Thurston. Uh, we want to say thank you to him and First Lady Thurston and to the Thurston family and the two, to the New Covenant Church. We want to thank you today for inviting myself and my wife and my children to share as we say Merry Christmas to all who are viewing, looking, and listening on today. This is a great day. It's a great day, the day that Jesus Christ was, was born, and to him we give all, all the glory. Again, let me, let me thank Dr. Thurston again for inviting me and my family to share on, on today. Certainly, he has been a friend, a brother a mentor down through the years, longtime uh, friend of our family. And again, I want to say thank you, Dr. Thurston, and certainly we pray blessings on your life and your family and your church on, on today. Uh, get, get your Bibles, Isaiah chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 9, and we just want to look at verse 6 on today as we celebrate the birth of of Christ. The word of God for the people of God says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. J just for these moments we have to share this morning, I want to talk from the subject the joy of Christmas, the joy of Christmas. Gracious Lord, how we thank you today for this, another precious privilege to stand to declare your truths to these God's people. We thank you for another glorious Christmas day. Now, God, we pray blessings on all who are looking and listening today. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I am, everything I'm not. Take me now. Use me as an empty vessel before a full fountain. Send your fire. Send your Holy Ghost today. And we'll thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The, the joy of Christmas. My, my brothers and sisters, uh, th this is a season of joy. It's a season of giving. Uh, it's a season of really being happy. Uh, uh, the question today uh, that we ought to ask is, uh, during this celebration of the birth of Christ, will Christ be the center of attention in our celebration on this Christmas day. May I suggest to us as Christians, as children of God, we need to remember that our joy is because of Jesus. Our songs are because of our Savior. Our love is because of our Lord. Our inheritance is because of his incarnation and our blessings are a result of his birth. The, the central figure throughout the scripture of Isaiah is Jesus is the conquering king. In this book of Isaiah we see it very vividly because it's interesting that there are 
are as many chapters in Isaiah as there are books in the whole Bible. That this book Isaiah, it deals with the Messiah. It, it gives a clear view of Calvary here. This, this, this name Isaiah means salvation of Jehovah. Uh, here it was 2,700 years ago, the prophet, he prophesies of the coming of Jesus Christ. And, and during this Christmas celebration, we need to know that Christmas is far more giving than receiving. E even though we allow ourselves to get caught up in the hustle and the bustle of, of Christmas, we, we all need to understand today uh, the true meaning of Christmas and the joy of Christmas. Let's take a few moments, if you got a little, little time this morning, and let's see what the prophet Isaiah prophesies about the joy of Christmas. Let me submit to you, first of all, he says to us that in order for us to really understand the joy joy of Christmas, he says, let's look at the joy of Christ's arrival. Look at verse 6. Keep your Bibles open. He says it like this, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, now listen, children, this tells us a lot about who the gift was and who the gift is. When we look at the phrase, a child is born, it identifies him as a man. That this baby Mary brought into the world over 2,000 years ago was, was fully human. He, he knew pain. He knew sorrow. He knew loss. He, he knew grief. He knew hunger. He knew thirst. He knew weariness. He even knew how to suffer. This would remind us that through this virgin birth, God Almighty became human. This phrase, a, a son is given, it identifies him as God. Now listen, God did not come to this world a fully grown man. He came as a infant, but, but the baby was God. <laughs> he was given so that we might be redeemed from our sins and born again into the family of God. Listen, we, we know this to be true because when we celebrate this day set aside as his birth, the prophet Isaiah mentions that after these two phrases that we have a gift yet to be delivered. He says they were not fulfilled during his first coming, but he, he is coming again. <laughs> and, and he's coming again, and, and this is a promise that we can hold on to because there is joy, listen to this, in Christ's arrival. That, that's not all the text will suggest to us today, children of God, not only do we see the joy of Christ's Arrival, but secondly, can I share with you? We see the joy of Christ's achievement. He says it like this and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now, listen, children, when, when Jesus comes back, he, he will come as a king to rule over everything. Now, now, since Jesus Christ is absolutely the sovereign ruler, he ought to be in our hearts and in our lives. Here it is. He reigns as king, and because he is reigning as king, he will bring great, great joy to the world. The, the, the prophet Isaiah tells us that when the Lord comes, he will give the world joy. It will be perfect because he will be known as king of kings. Well, one day the Lord Jesus will occupy the throne of 
David. He will rule in righteousness. He'll rule in power. He'll rule in his glory. And when he does, the world will be transformed by his power. Listen on this Christmas day. What a, what a day that's going to be when, when the world will be transformed by his, his power. We'll, we'll know him as king of of king the bible says there was joy when when jesus was born in bethlehem the angels rejoiced that the child would bring peace to the world they they, they said it like this dr thurston they said glory to god in the highest and on earth peace good will towards men. Listen, we, we can have joy at, at Christmas time because we've seen Christ's arrival. We've noticed Christ's achievement. But I'm in my seat when I tell you we must look at Christ's acknowledgments because the prophet Isaiah tells us that when Jesus comes, he will be acknowledged but one name is not enough to identify this child. He, he put it like this. He said, he will be called Wonderful Counselor. That means he is profound. Now, when we look at this adjective, wonderful, it refers to actions that are beyond the bounds of human power and can be translated as astonishing, amazing, even extraordinary. Here it is. It's coupled with the word counselor. We see Jesus who gives profound counsel to people. Now, when we look at this word counselor in the Bible, it refers to an advisor, one who is the ideal ruler. And listen today, church, life is filled with decisions, with details, and even disasters. That's why we need a wonderful counselor. We, we, we need one who is able and available to counsel us. We need one who will give us his undivided attention because he, he cares. He, he provides comfort while remaining confidential. We need one who can tell us the truth about ourselves while giving us what we need to make life changes. Jesus has counsel for every crisis, for every pandemic, for every pandemonium, even for every problem. Can I prophesy and tell you God, the Lord Jesus, he has a plan uh -huh, for your life. He has a solution for selfishness. He had an answer for anxiety. He, he's got a message for your your misery. Listen, we are never alone when we are alone with Jesus because the truth is when God is all you have, uh-huh, that's really all you need. I think y'all can talk to somebody and tell them on Christmas Day, when God is all you have, that's really all, all you need. I told you he is. He's profound. He's up wonderful counselor, but also he says he is powerful. He says he's the mighty God. Now this adjective means he's the strong one. He's a powerful, valiant warrior. This title is used to describe a, a hero because he's profound in his counsel and he has the power to accomplish whatever he will. Now listen, children, as a wonderful counselor, he makes the plans. But as the mighty God, he makes the plans work. <laughs> and I say it to you like this. Uh, here it was, this, this humble carpenter of Nazareth is also the mighty architect of the universe. But don't forget, he is God, and he can handle anything. The writer John MacArthur says, don't forget, 
he's God because Christ loves us and he steps into a life of chaos and not only provides wonderful counsel, but also displays his divine power by bringing order to the chaos. So listen, I've come today to encourage you on this Christmas day to understand that the Lord is a wonderful counselor. He is a mighty God, and he can handle anything. So listen, children, on this Christmas day, why don't you let him fight your battle? <laughs> why don't you worship him as our warrior? For we've got to remember when the angel spoke to Mary in Luke 1, 37, he said to her, for nothing is impossible with God. I told you he's profound. He's powerful. But the prophet goes on to tell us he's also personal. He called him the everlasting father. When we look at this third adjective, we see that Jesus is before, above, and beyond time. This literally means children that, uh-huh, uh he lives forever. For you remember, Jesus made the statement in John 8 and 58. He says, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus existed not only before Abraham, but uh, he declared his divinity because he is forever our Father, and he cares for us with compassion. I told you his name is profound, powerful, and personal. But then finally, he said his name is peaceful, for he called him the Prince of Peace. Now, a prince in the Bible times was known as the general of the army. It described leadership and uh, authority. You remember in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26, God gave Moses these words to use when blessing his people. He said to him, the Lord bless you and uh, keep you. The Lord uh, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord uh, turn his face toward you and uh, give you peace. When we look in the New Testament, it gives us three phases of peace. It talks about peace with God. That's the vertical dimension. It talks about the peace of God. That's uh, the internal dimension. But then it talks about peace with others, and that's the horizontal commental uh, dimension. But uh, when we look at Jesus, he, can I tell you, he came to put us, uh, he came to put us back, back together again. Uh, and because he came, uh, one day the world's going to bow uh, at his feet. Feet, uh, and uh, we gonna acknowledge him uh, to be Lord of Lord, uh, because Paul told us in Philippians uh, chapter two, verse nine uh, through eleven, he said, "Wherefore God, uh, oh, and, uh, have highly exalted him uh, and given him a name uh, which is above every name." Uh, he said that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in earth, of things in heaven, and things under the earth. He said, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to 
the glory of God the Father. I've got to go children. Merry Christmas to you. But before I, before I leave you, I need to just encourage you to know that if you really want joy at Christmas, you've got to know Jesus for yourself. When we look at his arrival and his achievement and his acknowledgement, I'm out of here, Dr. Thesson, but I got to ask you this morning, do you who know him, do you know him? If you don't know him, let me introduce you to him. He's a physician that never lost a case. He's a captain who never lost a battle. He's a teacher who perfectly teaches every student. He's the preacher who always preaches the right message. He's the musician who always plays the right message. Note, he's the artist who never misses a stroke. He's the savior who completely saves all who come to him. He's the master who always gives the right direction. He's a friend who sticks him closer than a brother. He's a counselor who always gives the right advice. Listen, boys, let's ride. Oh, do you know him? He's joy. Oh, 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 joy and sorrow. Oh, he's peace in a pandemic. Hey, yeah. He's our hope. Yes, Lord. When we're hopeless, he's our living oh yes i live a redeemer i'm so glad oh that i still got joy and the reason i got it oh, not because jesse was born but because on friday
to three. I want you to go to celebrate it. I want you to go to dance it. I want you to go to shout it on the fact that I still got my joy. I still got my peace. I still got my hope. One, two, three. Yeah! Yeah! Thank you, Barnes family. This has already been a start for a good day and blessed Christmas to every one of you today. May the Lord bless you real good and may the Lord continue to smile upon you on this his day. And I trust his day in all of your lives. Come on, Megan, we're going to shut it down and praise the Lord again. I want to thank the Barnes family for giving us the opportunity to celebrate Jesus Christ, our Savior. And listen, if you've got people in your family that do not know Christ as their personal Savior, now is the best time for them to come to know him for themselves. I thank God that I met him one Sunday morning changed my life, turned my life around, made a difference in my life, and he can do it in your life on this day. As Sister Barnes said, there's no greater gift than the gift of God's Son to make a difference in your life praise God praise God if you don't know him then come on you can call us here at the church 773-846-3700 someone will bring you to a right relationship with Jesus Christ if you're here if you're listening if you are with your family even if it's virtual come on and make a difference in your life oh yes great times to be together and we bless God 
for it. I want all of you to sing, all of you to sing as we close this Christmas service. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. And we're going to sing it together. And may you have a blessed Christmas day and a continued blessed God's work in your life. Receive. Come on, everybody. That's it. Heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven. Heaven and heaven and nature sing. Come on now. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Oh, yeah. God Let bless you. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. Just sing and heaven and heaven and nature. Oh, yes. Come on, come on. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. lady, your family, all of the children, thank you so much. May the Lord bless you and may you receive the joy of the Lord during this time as we celebrate. God bless you. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. May the Lord uh, shine upon you and richly drop into your life and in the life of your family the presence of the living God. And may this joy be your joy in every day that God gives you. May the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. And the people of God said amen, amen.